Hi, I'm Mark Fletcher. I'm the Vice President of Public Safety Solutions here at 911 Inform. Today, we're going to go over why next generation 911 solutions are more cost efficient and how to accomplish compliance and protection of your staff without breaking the budget. Let's get started. There have been some recent legislation changes that impact the requirements of any facility with a multi-line telephone system. In February of 2020, Kerry's Law went into effect for all new or upgraded PBX systems. Kerry's Law requires direct dialing of 911 without an access code, and it also requires on-site notification of those emergency call events. On January 6th of 2021, the Raybombs Act Phase 1 went into effect, which requires a dispatchable location be reported both to the 911 center or emergency call center, as well as to on-site personnel. Next year, on January 6th, 2022, that gets extended from just wired devices into wireless devices. And then a third law that's applicable to K-12 schools at this point is Alyssa's Law which is currently in effect in New Jersey and the state of Florida, with federal legislation pending. Now, Alyssa's law requires that a mobile panic button be provided for schools that notifies the PSAP during an active shooter emergency. While Kerry's law and the Ray Bombs Act are part of the Code of Federal Regulations and carry a penalty of $10,000 plus $500 a day, the real financial concern is the liability from a wrongful death judgment. As seen in the Carrie Hunt case, those can be well into the millions, as well as doing significant damage to the brand. Let's talk a little bit about public safety technology and the legacy 911 system, which has some architecture limitations as compared to an IP-enabled next-generation 911 system. A legacy E911 network uses the telephone number of the originating station to decide the routing of a call through the network into the appropriate emergency contact center. The 911 network identifies the location of the call based on the originating phone number, and then the selective router, or 911 tandem, connects that call after referencing a Master Street address guide. When the call arrives at the ECC, the specialized equipment at the 911 center captures the caller ID, also known as Automatic Number Identification Information, or ANI. A location query is made into the state databases, and a 512-character text record is then returned to the ECC. This record has important information such as the business name, the street address, and other information including what's known as address line 2, which is a customizable 20 character field that the customer can use to uniquely identify the location of the originating device. Once again, address line 2 is a single field in the record and is typically 20 to 30 characters in length depending on the database implementation. Now, the problem with this automatic location information, or ALLI record, is that the data is not dynamic, and any updates to this database typically take 24 to 48 hours to be applied. Now, while that was typically sufficient when most endpoints were analog in nature and resided at the end of a set of copper wires that typically didn't move without administrative intervention, in today's dynamic and nomadic environment, a 24 to 48 hour delay can have a significant impact on the proper emergency response. Next generation 911 identity and location information is data that's passed in near real time into the next gen 911 network. If a next generation 911 ECC is not available, the data is easily down converted into the legacy database where it's displayed to the emergency call taker. And if a next generation 911 network is not available where the call can ingress, over the top solutions exist that provide a parallel path that the data can traverse until such a time where a next-gen 911 network is available directly. One of these parallel networks is the Rapid SOS Additional Data Repository. This particular interface is deployed in well over 4,000 PSAMPs across the U.S., covering over 93% of the population. These networks are in use today to deliver explicit location information from Apple and Android devices. Because next generation 911 data is IP based and multimodal by nature, a new next generation 911 ECC display is available to the 911 emergency call centers. When calls originate from a commercial business, basic floor plans can be overlaid on a Google aerial view, 
showing the parking lots, entrance and exit doors, as well as basic room information and other important layouts of the building. This provides a better operational picture of exactly where a 911 call has originated from, as you can see in room D on this plan, and even wireless devices can be plotted with a circle of expected accuracy as shown in the circle. In addition to caller information, connected building information can also be displayed. Here you can see live icons of the doors, which are currently locked, but any one of these can be clicked on and remotely unlocked to allow egress or ingress into the building. Video camera icons can share active video, and these floor plans can be interactive, displaying any digital context that's available for the situation at hand. Another efficiency that's gained with next generation 911 is the operational cost that the databases provide. In a legacy E911 environment, unique records are required for each individual device that needs to report its location. Because this creates an excessive amount of database records, in the past enterprises have backed off to zone or floor level granularity in an effort to reduce the number of database entries. But by doing this, we're compromising on the most important piece of data that first responders need, specific location. Think about it. If I have a thousand endpoints in my building, I need to create a thousand database records. And because each one of those database records is keyed off of a telephone number, I need a thousand unique DID telephone numbers. And the DID numbers, as well as the 911 database records, carry a monthly OPEX and require care and feeding as devices move. The complexity of this environment is probably the number one reason why 911 databases get ignored. After all, 80% of 911 calls originate from cellular phones anyway. On the other hand, next generation 911 records are near real time in nature. They're created when stations register and then held internally at no monthly cost until a 911 call is made and we need to send them to the ECC. Because these records can be sent in near real time with the call, when a particular device makes the call, its individual data record information is packaged within what we call a shell record, which is then transmitted directly into the NG911 ECC environment. So in order to achieve individual station level detailed location information, a single shell record can serve as a placeholder for an entire building, significantly reducing the monthly operational costs of that database. And in our current environment where we've sent the bulk of our users home, those effectively are single user remote offices. And under a legacy environment, each one requires a unique DID number and a unique 911 database number. But again, with the pooling of location data in an internal database, that data can be transmitted in near real time to 911, significantly reducing the number of 911 records that are required for remote work at home users. We mentioned earlier that 80% of all 911 calls originate from cellular devices. But as a commercial enterprise, those devices are not on your network and you've got no association with them. So when they dial a 911 call on your property or in your building, you're totally blind to that situation. The 911 Inform solution is able to address that environment because any modern smartphone that's had a software update in the last two to three years has a new capability built in called device-based hybrid location. Special code has been placed in the operating system by the manufacturers of those devices so that when they make a 911 call, in addition to transmitting the call over the normal cellular network, a very specific and accurate data location payload is transmitted to a company called Rapid SOS. When a Rapid SOS enabled 911 center or ECC receives a cellular call, a query is made into the Rapid SOS additional data repository. And if a location payload exists for that phone number, it's delivered to the ECC over an IP connection. 911 Inform also uses the Rapid SOS ADR as a storage repository for multimedia commercial data. That can include detailed location, floor plans, and links to other IP content shared by the enterprise. 
but when a cellular call is processed by the Rapid SOS ADR and the location marker of that cellular device lands inside of a geofence that we create around the property, the enterprise is alerted to that call event plus the specific longitude and latitude of the device making that call, whether it's inside the building or outside within the property boundaries. Once that bridge has been established between the enterprise network and public safety, any additional information contained within the network, such as floor plans and video cameras, are now available, creating an intelligent, common operational picture. So the 911 Inform solution for the enterprise not only covers the 20% of 911 calls made from enterprise PBX telephones, but we cover the other 80% coming from smartphones, even calls initiated by IoT devices, which many estimate will exceed the number of manually dialed emergency calls in the next five years. We know you've probably got questions and our team of experts has answers for your specific environment. You can reach out to us by phone at 833-333-1911 or visit us on the web at 911inform.com. We'd be happy to set up a custom demonstration specifically for your environment to show you how you can be compliant with an NG911 solution or if you have an E911 solution already, how we can lower your monthly operational expense while increasing the information that we provide to public safety. Thanks so much for listening. I'm Mark Fletcher, the Vice President of Public Safety at 911 Inform. Thanks for listening. Have a great day.